Good morning, and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Burns, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly online event. We are a webinar. Um, we cover a variety of topics that may be of interest to libraries, librarians, library staff. Um, the show is free and open to anyone to watch, both our live show here on Wednesday mornings and our archive recordings. They're all available on our website. Um, we do the show live on, <coughs> excuse me, on Wednesday mornings at 10 a.m. Central Time. And, but if you can't join us on Wednesdays, that's what our recordings are all there for. You can always go there onto our website and see um, everything back to when we started in January 2009. You can go all the way back there and watch um, any of our recordings. Um, we do a mixture of things here, presentations, um, book reviews, mini training sessions, uh, demos, basically just anything that may be of interest to um, the library world we are happy to have on the show. And we have sometimes our Nebraska Library Commission staff will do uh, presentations. And sometimes we have guest speakers, as that is what we have this morning. Um, our topic for this week, Encompass Live, is, as you can see there on the starting slide, Opportunity, Collaboration, Engagement. Um, and this is about the um, University of Nebraska at Lincoln's um, Extension Office, their Community Vitality Initiative, something new. Um, Honestly, I'm not sure how new, but we'll find out from our speakers. Um, on the line with us, we have um, three of their um, three staff from the Yale Extension. Uh, Connie Hancock. Hello, Connie. Good morning. Good morning. And you are joining us from where exactly were you? You said I you were in Dubuque, Iowa. Right. Yes. All our speakers this morning are remotely, and they're all not together. Oh, they're all <laughs> out and about elsewhere. So Connie's in Iowa. Um, Kim, uh, Kim Barons, where are you at? today? I'm, I'm in Stanton County. Actually, I am in my office. So You're actually at work. I'm probably the lucky one. <laughs> and then we have our second Connie, who is uh, running our slides for us this morning as well. Um, Connie, how you, re, Rymers, is that how you pronounce That's it? Rymers, you. Rymers Hill. Yep. Where are you at? I'm actually in my office too, so I'm, I'm feeling lucky like Kim today. Um, here at the <laughs> Kimmel Education and Research Center in Nebraska City, Nebraska. Okay, great. So we've got all three of them online, and I'll just um, are they going to tell us about this new um, project they're doing uh, through the university. So I'll just hand over to you guys to go ahead and uh, take it away to, with your presentation. Great, thank you, Krista. We really appreciate the, this time with your group, um, and I'm going to warn you a little bit. We we do want this to be interactive, so <laughs> we want this to be just like this first slide says really an opportunity itself as we view community vitality and this initiative that we're launching through the University of Nebraska Lincoln Extension. Um, and it's all really about collaboration and engagement. So just as we want the community vitality initiative to be an opportunity for collaboration and engagement, we also want this webinar to be the same thing um, because it's really a great opportunity for us to, to network with a group that we don't know a whole lot about necessarily. I mean, some people have worked with libraries in our counties, some people have not. So this is a great opportunity for us. Um, and before I, I get started too much, I just want to take a, a minute to talk about a little bit about what Extension is. Um, and in Extension, we're part of the Re University of Nebraska Lincoln system, but we're really faculty and staff that are located on our Nebraska-wide campus. So we actually have people from the University of Nebraska working all across the state. And our job and our goal really is to bring relevant research-based information to our communities that can be used. And the Community Vitality Initiative is one of the ways that we're working to really grow this part of what we do. Um, we want to help communities really reach their desired futures and be a partner in that. Um, we do a lot of different types of programs in Extension, and a lot of times people maybe recognize us more for traditional agriculture work. Um, and we still do a lot of that with cattle and corn and soybeans. And 4-H is a great part of Extension, working with young people and communities. But we also do a lot of leadership development, entrepreneurship development, and the Community Vitality Initiative is one of the pieces of that puzzle. So that's what we're going to focus on a little bit today. I would also welcome anyone to ask any questions um, that yeah, can be typed into the chat box. Um, so please, at any time, if you do have a question, let us know so that we can um, answer those questions and address any questions you might have. So wherever you live in Nebraska, you have the university right there, too, as a partner in your community. So that's something I want to stress because 
um, I know not everybody always knows about extension and what we do. And we've already been through the introductions, so there you can see a picture of the three of us. Um, I do want to say that Connie and Kim are both co-leading the Community Vitality Initiative. Um, so they've they've just been fantastic because it has it's quite a, a wonderful project, but it's a big project too because it doesn't just involve extension. It's not internal. It's actually very external, and we're going to talk a little bit about that with the partnerships and, and sort of the creation of, of doing things maybe differently than what they've been done in the past. And basically, with the Community Vitality Initiative, the opportunity here is to help Nebraska communities expand capacity to be vibrant, prosperous places where people want to live and raise families. So we recognize that in Nebraska, we have some challenges around you know, keeping people in rural places and really helping grow those, those rural places. And what we want to do at the Community Vitality Initiative is, is sort of turn the tide and really you know, help those Nebraska communities in ways that work for them um, in the ways that they want to grow and expand, but really be those prosperous places, places where people want to live, they want to play, they want to raise their families and where they want to be. And they can do whatever they want to create their desired futures. And Extension wants to be a partner in that. Um, now the other piece of the Community Vitality Initiative puzzle is what's called the Rural Futures Initiative. And the Rural Futures Initiative is also a, a university initiative, but it encompasses the entire university system, so the Med Center, University of Nebraska at Omaha, University of Nebraska at Lincoln, University of Nebraska um, at Kearney and Curtis, and we're working very closely to, with the Rural Futures Initiative to really bring that research-based information and our capacity to the communities because we already have a strong presence in, in those communities in extension. And so um, the Rural Futures Institute, you may hear that term as well, um, and that, that's just another entity that's working with us in CVI, as we call Community Vitality Initiative, to really help Nebraska you know, be the best that it can be and, and continue to grow and prosper and do great things and be a place where people want to live. The Community Vitality Initiative fosters the future of Nebraska through community-centered capacity building. Um, you know, we recognize that the, the communities themselves really have to be the leader in, in all of this and build their capacity. And, and it is really about them creating their desired future. We don't want to come to them and say, here's some programs. <laughs> you know how we have, here are some programs. But rather, have it come from them um, so that we can help them. And it's really a community-centered sort of process. Um, so it's focused around what they're wanting to do and where they're wanting to go and to grow. Um, educational opportunities that are relevant and research-based. Um, we really are, in extension, are striving to be very timely and relevant. So, you know, all communities are very different and, and have different needs and expectations and, and different desires. And so that does mean we have to be flexible and relevant to the needs and desires of those communities, but also bring that research piece to the table. You know, what has worked in other states, other communities, other countries even, so what's research-based so that we can continue to grow in a credible way and bring information maybe that's new and different, but also that's worked in other places. I mean, that research piece is something that the university can bring to the table. Um, collaborative networks to address opportunities and challenges of rural people and places. Uh, my focus area actually is in leadership and innovation. And, you know, wherever there's a challenge, there's also an opportunity. And, and sometimes we don't always see that. So really, we want to be able to address those challenges and find the opportunities in those challenges so that we can help form these collaborative networks, be a part of these collaborative and knowledge networks, and really, you know, make places strong and vibrant and continue to help them grow on a trajectory that works best for them. But also recognizing that we want collective impact. Um, you know, it really takes you know, a village <laughs> to raise a small child. A lot of us have heard that. I think it's the same in community vitality. We really want to work together with partners um, so that we can all make a difference together and walk this path together and, and maybe put our resources and our strengths together in new and different ways um, than what we've even thought of in the past. And I think that's what's so exciting about this webinar, for example. You know, libraries are such a, a great asset in our communities. I know here in Nebraska City, the library is a place where 
a lot of our middle schoolers go after school. Um, a lot of our people in our, our area here in southeast Nebraska, um, my kids, for example, in daycare, they go to the library once a week for programs. And it's just been, you know, in these, these two communities that I have a touch in or live my life in, you know, a person I think sometimes takes for granted, you know, what the libraries bring to the table. And it's, they're such great resources. And so when Connie Hancock talked about this webinar, I know personally I just got excited because libraries do a lot for our communities. And so maybe it's looking at our, our networks and our knowledge and, and what we do and our strengths and combining it in different ways to continue to help our communities. I think one thing we realize is that um, this Community Vitality Initiative, it is relatively new. Um, while we've been working in communities a long time, this is really our effort to sort of bring it all together um, under one umbrella. But we do recognize it's going to be an evolutionary process. And, and we really want it to be because it can't be a one-size-fits-all type of thing. There's no, you know, just easy sort of formula or recipe for all this. It is going to evolve over time and it's going to change over time. And, you know, it's a really important part because for it to be successful and relevant um, and nimble, we're really going to have to make sure it evolves over time and continues to change. And in fact, um, when we, we kind of thought about a concept paper for the Community Vitality Initiative, one of the things we did is, is really looked at um, business modeling and what happens around you know, successful businesses and how we can pivot a little bit faster in the work that we're doing. So while we worked at doing some initial planning, um, we want to kind of use a minimum viable product sort of design. So how do we do that, that initial planning, but, you know, get the requirements in place, look at some analysis and design, implement, test, evaluate, get feedback and involve partners the whole time. I mean, our model would look a little different than this, but it, the concept is sort of the same. And continue to evolve it and change it based on feedback and sort of real-time information and data and evaluation. So we can continue to tweak it and make what we're doing better and better and better, um, rather than just come with a full program, for example, like, okay, we have this great leadership development program. We'd love to teach in this community. That's not really the, the goal. The goal more is how do we plan with these communities together, develop and launch what they're needing, test it, and continue to evolve and innovate it over time in a quicker fashion, in a faster way um, that makes sense and is very relevant to the needs of those communities. So I do want to kind of open it up a little bit. Um, and we want to hear from you. So again, type your messages in, or um, I know you can be unmuted too and, and use your microphone if you'd rather do that. But one of the questions um, that we have for, for this group in particular is what opportunities do you see for potential partnerships and collaborations to help Nebraska communities? And what ideas do you have that, that um, could be incorporated into kind of the Community Vitality Initiative, or, you know, how might, might we partner um, in a way that maybe you're doing already or, or something we could work at doing. So just a little oh. brainstorming, virtual brainstorming would be great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so if this is Krista again, if anyone does have any thoughts, um, maybe things you've already been doing in your communities or in your library, um, type into the questions section, or if you have you know, want to know more about it or something, you can type in there. Um, if you have a microphone, just let me know and I can hit unmute and um, let you uh, share your thoughts that way. So I asked Connie, have you said that I know this is a new program, a new project. Um, have you been out in the communities already? Is there some of these things that are already going on? Some yeah, of these, and, you know, um, that's a great question, Krista, and I want to, I, I, I want to make sure I'm, I'm clear on this. And, you know, Connie and Kim jump in as well. You know, I, I don't need to be the sole answer here because, you know, just like even when you introduced us, we're all three <laughs> in different <laughs> places and different mm -hmm. So, you know, Extension has been involved in communities. This year, actually, we're celebrating our 100th year oh, of nice. Extension. And, you know, our goal really is not to be the best kept secret anymore. We kind of joke mm -hmm. about that, but it's also kind of a point of pain for us. 
Um, because we have been working in communities, and a lot of times when people think of extension, they think of traditional ag, but that's a really right, important yeah. part of community vitality, you know, for especially for states like Nebraska. That's a very strong um, part of community vitality. Um, and I guess I would say that, you know, we've been doing this work for 100 years, but it's time for us to maybe do it a little differently and, and maybe bring some different, you know, ideas or concepts to the table um, to really kind of focus on the communities themselves in a different way. And we'll talk about some of the outcomes and um, some of the conversations that have already happened around community vitality and, and this initiative. Mm -hmm. So we've been there, we've been helping, but we wanted, we just kind of want to shore it up and tweak it a little bit um, to make it, you know, more focused. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, we actually have um, our, we have some commission staff here that I know you've been working with um, that are watching in another room. I'm going to unmute them right now. Um, you guys are unmuted. You can go ahead, Joanne or whoever's there. Hi there, it's Mary Jo. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Go yeah. ahead. Okay, great. Um, I just wanted to mention that uh, we're very pleased to be working with some extension educators to do educational programming for library customers right in the library. Um, right now we're planning that financial education project and maybe Connie you'd like to talk a little bit about that and that might get people's ideas flowing. Sure, I would be glad to. Um, it's an online curriculum that the Library Commission, through your BTOP grant, um, have um, invested in. And um, Joanne and Mary Jo have reached out to um, Extension to help kind of facilitate that conversation and potentially work with those, I think it's 13 um, libraries across the state that will be doing some kickoff work, uh, will be doing some work around financial literacy um, through a, a period of time and then help with that celebration. So our role is really to help support and provide some expertise in, um, in that arena. And you know, one of the other things that is, as we're talking about this, I really see that the library is one of the anchor institutions in our local communities. It really is a hub for a lot of activities that go on, whether that be from an adult perspective or a youth perspective. And think about the possibilities of partnering, whether that's with Extension or the Chamber of Commerce or some other entities in our communities to really do some big and bold things that are kind of outside the box, things that we're not traditionally aware of. Um, um, doing. And I, I really see that the library is that hub of activity for a lot of things, particularly around the youth ex, um, area. And as we get into our outcomes, which we have, I actually have three of them that Kim is going to talk about, youth is a big component of this. And as we think about young people returning home or coming to our communities, making sure that they have really good experiences and have connections. Um, and mentors, um, because we need to grow our, our communities and we realize that the next generation of young people is really where that population is going to be. It's not going to be my age of people um, that's going to grow that community. Connie, this is Kim, if I could chime in just a little bit. Um, one of the other programs that we've got currently running through many of the libraries um, in Nebraska right now is a is a 4-H youth program that addresses ag literacy and science and there's a set of six lessons I think um, that you can choose from robotics, electronics, um, electricity uh, and we've rolled that out to many of the libraries so some of you may have already partnered with 4-H project and these are um, targeted towards youth so we want to not only reinforce the importance of science, engineering, and technology, and uh, in our communities, but to bring the bring the youth together and continue the learning over the summer. Um, that's the great thing about 4-H. You know, when schools out, there are kids. So um, we that's something that we would uh, really like to do, and, and a place where we want to be. So we've partnered with some already, and. If, if we have more interest in that, you can contact one of us and I'll get you in, uh, in touch with Jackie Steffens who coordinated that program out of Cedar County. 
Um, but that's just a, a, a small thing that we're, we're rolling out this summer. Thanks, both of you. I, I, this is Mary Jo again. You know, I just think these are both great examples. Um, both the example with the youth in the summer reading program, which is focused on science and technology this summer, but also the example of working with adults in communities across the state through the FINRA Financial Education Foundation grant. So these are just both, I think, terrific examples of how there is a role for the library staff and a role for the extension educators. And it's two separate roles, but when they're together, they can do programming that they couldn't do separately. So I think it's, it's great to be thinking about what some of these examples are. Yeah, I, I agree. And, and just from the mom perspective, you know, I, the, my, with my kids going to the Plattsmouth Library once a week, you know, it's, it's really great to know as a parent that when my kids are in daycare, they're learning. You know, they're going there and they're learning. They come home, they're really excited. You know, my daughter brought home a book. She's brought home several different projects that they've done during that time. And, you know, it's a, it's a great, I think, a great value to our communities. And, and I think, as it was mentioned, too, that whole education still in the summer. You know, so it's not like they're just going there, you know, and playing or something. <laughs> I mean, playing's good too, but there's actually continued learning in the summertime, which I, I think is fantastic for our young people and, and our families and our communities. Mm -hmm. uh, we do have one comment from um, the audience too. Uh, Rochelle McPhillips is on. She's at Columbus Public Library, and she says they've they've done some things with Extension Office, um, doing career education planning and um, cooking programs with the teens. Their children's librarian partnered with the Extension Office for summer programming for fourth and fifth graders, and they cooked and talked about digestion and other things related <laughs> to that. <laughs> so got some cooking lessons and then found out um, what happens after you eat it, I guess. <laughs> Cool. You know, another another conversation that we're that we're having internal at this point is around cultural diversity, mm. and how we can um, do some things to build relationships. But we can also learn about the different cultures. As as you mentioned, the food piece. Um, there's some really cool things, cool uh, cool ideas out there to learn about the culture via food or art or whatever. And so again, that's an opportunity for us to. Um, partner up with not only extension, but then what else in the community is dealing with or um, trying to build those relationships around cultural diversity. And so bringing in a steering team of people to have that conversation um, it makes it just much more richer and um, it, it doesn't put a burden on any one entity to be the, the sole leader or the sole trainer of something, but you rely upon then a team of people to um, build that um, that experience, and it's nice like if you have an idea of something that maybe someone at the extension office could then you know, what you're saying implement it for you. You know, you've got something you want to do with the library, but you're not sure how do I get this program going? Who's going to teach it? How am I going to know what the you know curriculum, so to speak, is going to be? That'd be a good resource for the the librarians to come to you guys. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and I think that's actually a good point to bring forward, Krista, too, is, you know, how do we facilitate this so, you know, is it just, I, I know like here when I brought up the middle school thing in, in Nebraska City, I have one of my colleagues, Dr. Deb Weissenkamp, does a lot of the science, technology, engineering, and math programming for youth, the STEM programming, so, you know, I think she's thought about, well, do I, I that maybe it's better for me to teach something after school at the library versus the school or even here at our Kimmel Education Research Center because that's where the kids are just going. You know, that's sort of where they congregate until mm -hmm. somebody comes and pick them, you know, to pick them up and, and whatnot. So, you know, I think it is just facilitating those conversations and, and having a good process to do that. Yeah, they're going there anyways. Might as well, yeah, get to them. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, we don't have any other comments that came in while we were chatting. I know, webinars, yeah. I love them, and I'm, but I'm always like, oh, how do we, you know, so <laughs> seriously, though, I mean, if people do have more, more questions, ideas, I mean, even just sharing what people have been sharing is great, because, you know, with our state, we're so big, sometimes it's hard to know what other communities are doing, mm. um, you know, so it's really good just to get those ideas, just to stimulate some additional thought. Um, and we do have libraries and extension throughout the state, so that's, I think, what makes the potential of this really cool. 
Well, with that, I will advance to the next slide here, and I believe Kim is going to. Oh, I think it's my turn. Continue the discussion. <laughs> That's right. I have you here, Kim. Okay. <laughs> Cast um, the so I know we have we've had a few questions, but I'm going to uh, kind of navigate us through some of the different areas that we've expanded out into, and hopefully after we talk about this, it will plant some seeds so that um, you guys can be thinking about how and what programs we can partner with and just give you some more ideas. So initially, this process has been going on, and Connie Reimers Hill was on this on the very beginning uh, when we were putting together the white paper. And uh, you know, a lot of the credit for this organizational piece goes to her and her team. But in the process, if you'll advance the slide, Connie, um, we're going to go to the three outcome areas, and the areas that we're, we're concentrating on, um, the teams as they're as they're if you will, are uh, engaging youth and young adults. Uh, we talked a little bit about that earlier. Our second area will be developing and growing business. And the third will be, or I should say currently is, uh, creating a 21st century community. These are the three areas that right now the, the, the Community Vitality Initiative is um, targeting to uh, to advance projects in and uh, collaborate with outside entities. So we're going to talk a little bit more about the engaging youth piece. Connie, if you'd forward that, please. Um, right now, the youth we're talking about youth and young adults, and we're, what we're hoping is that they will pursue opportunities for careers back in our uh, Nebraska communities and become com uh, contributing members. Um, we also want our communities to be have a healthy structure and foster community improvement and hopefully create a shared vision with the youth and the young adults coming back. And my area that I focus in primarily is uh, youth career development and workforce prep. So this is kind of the area that I, that I work in here in uh, Stanton County in the northeast corner especially part of the Nebraska area. And we're really working hard to get our kids to see that there is a future for them, a place for them to come back to, and, and, uh, and a home for them to um, feel good about uh, bringing their business, bringing their families back. We, we're trying, we've got some really great um, projects and programs out there with entrepreneurship and leadership programs, citizenship programs that will help, help the youth discover um, career choices. And we, we do a lot of programming areas across the state, uh, numerous ones that uh, hopefully will get those kids to see that they're, um, the, the benefit, see the benefits of staying home and staying local. You know, and part of that too is also training the parents and the grandparents to, to realize that there's a benefit staying here, and, and the best jobs are not uh, across the state lines, that they're right here at home. So uh, we're trying very, very hard to develop those local opportunities and make those uh, uh, relationships very meaningful, give the kids opportunities for, for leadership, and, and um, teach them the, the techniques and the skills that they need to come back and help with the city council. or or learn what it is to be in state and county government and things that they can contribute um, not only on the local level but as you move up through the opportunities um, through, through the state. So um, increasing that community connectedness I think is the, is the key um, and not only with the youth but we, we try to work very hard with the parents to make them see that also. Um, and, and that's one of the areas that, that we're, uh, we're concentrating on with youth and adult. If you'll slide to the next, um, we do a lot of entrepreneurship, a lot of business development. Uh, we have different programs that we've done. Uh, we have a making money camp. Um, there's a lot of, of, of ESI, we call it, entrepreneurship programs across the state. We have a, an international ESI curriculum that is uh, uh, wonderful. 
bar none. There's nothing in the in the nation that compare can compare to it. Um, we work a lot with matchmaking mentoring programs. Uh, one of the things that we do across the state, there's a program called the Area Health Education Career Centers. There's four across the state, and I'm affiliated with the one in the Northeast. They do a lot of mentoring programs where they bring, or internship programs, and, they, and it's mostly in the health career area. But we partner with them across the state and do a lot of programs. I work with the local student group here, the health career student group, and come in and work with them um, as a guest speaker, bring, bring programs in. They take the kids out to the hospitals, as an example, and let them actually see what uh, a, a, de a degree in nursing and a program in nursing or a job in nursing and dentistry or, or whatever it might be, uh, for the kids to actually experience it, see the hospitals and everybody have been really uh, open to letting us do that. Those mentoring programs are popping up all over and if we can get the kids to see the benefit of staying home and young adults staying home, um, I think it's great. Um, the community awareness, every community right now uh, is trying to be progressive and uh, uh, show what they got. Uh, things that they can entice people to come, what they do best, um, there's the Norfolk community does a great job with bringing uh, young adults back and they've got a recruitment program that they work with. There's all types of things across the state. All our communities are, are looking to bring people back and how to strengthen their communities. And the Community Vitality Initiative can be a, a huge asset to, to that. And helping train and connect our young adults is, is huge. Um, we have um, wonderful job opportunities. Nebraska came through the recession in great shape, actually pretty good shape, and there's a lot of opportunities out there. We just have to open their eyes and help them make the connection back into our, our, uh, our, our communities and see the benefits. So that's, that's one of the things that uh, we're, we're proud of what we're doing, but we need a lot more uh, collaboration and we're bringing in outside partners and, and trying to bring uh, programs that will be that will cross cut um, all cultures and diversity also. So okay and Kim, Kim. Oh Kim, yes. Back on the engaging youth and young adults, those four um, topics are really the areas that um, the team will be focusing on. And so if you think about your own interest and passion and if it happens to be around this engaging youth and young adults in these four areas, uh, we're trying to create programming that we can take statewide. And so if you would like to be involved in any of that, we would certainly welcome your um, input into those four. We've got committees currently with folks that have identified chairs. And it's not just extension folks. It's um, other folks from community colleges um, and other agencies that have taken on that role as well. So we'll, we'll talk about how to be involved later on, but I wanted to, to clarify that these are really the four topics that we will be potentially focusing on and having more conversation around. Exactly. And as we, as we visit, there's, there's two other areas we'll, we'll uh, visit about just a little bit, and that goes the same, um, that, that same uh, invitation is there. So if there's something out, uh, er, some area that really um, excites you, we can absolutely make the connection for you and uh, plug you into that group that, that is uh, focusing in that area. Thanks, Connie. Okay, well, let's talk a little bit about growing Nebraska business. Um, that's one of the other areas. Uh, we want our rural, rural Nebraska businesses to grow and develop and uh, uh, and part of that is to create new businesses and strengthen the businesses that are there. Um, we want to retain our jobs for rural Nebraska um, and increase the number of young people out in, um, in the Nebraska jo job market. So it's very important. Um, and it's a very important area that this is uh, addressing. Um, the Ag and Natural Resources is, is an enterprise that's starting and flourishing in a, in a lot of of the communities and certainly to expand uh, the ag base and profit centers um, across the state. We'll talk a little bit about or they'll work on uh, food access and quality and, um, and production, 
processing. Uh, Nebraska does a lot of food processing across the state in, in the ag and natural resources area. So that's, that's a huge area too. Ag and agritourism agri opportunities that will attract people. We've got a, a good agritourism uh, uh, group that is, that is addressing some of these ideas and, um, and working on possibilities of, of increasing the tourism opportunities. Um, there's a lot of tourism groups across the state too, so um, I think there's a lot of area, areas that might be um, uh, something that you would be, like to be involved in, hopefully. And then uh, the resources are trans, uh, transferred um, for wealth and retention and sustainability. Um, how, how is that going to work? Um, what, what might be most important? How can we, how can we keep the resources here? and and uh, build and grow uh, using those resources um, with with uh, with uh, Nebraska businesses. So, Connie, if you'll forward me then to we'll talk a little bit about the entrepreneurial entrepreneurial and economic uh, ecosystem. This is one of the areas that they're going to focus on. Another would be transitioning community and ag businesses. Um, we've got a lot of community and ag businesses with uh, aging um, <laughs> aging owners, I guess. I guess that's what I want to say. And so how can we transition those to some of our young adults and get them to mentor or match up uh, and, and maybe bring those young people back and, and uh, show, the, show the value of, of trans and transitioning those and keeping those businesses uh, vital in the community. Um, they're working on an answer guide, a business answer guide, and uh, they're possibly trying to collaborate with the Rural Futures Initiative and that Connie had addressed earlier. So, so that's a project that they're working on right now. Um, they're trying to develop a model for best practices for offering work-based learning experiences in rural communities, internships, and job shadowing. Um, that, that will come through here. You will also see, and which we didn't really talk about, but there are some themes that may go through all three of the areas, and this would be something, too, that, that maybe would uh, partner with part of the youth programming or youth and adult, youth and young adult programming, too, with a job shadowing and internship um, creation. And then uh, they want to be very innovative as they, as they explore online uh, programs with customized consulting. How how is that going to look? Um, if if you have a love for technology, this might be just the spot for you. Um, but that might be uh, something to consider, and and that's one of the areas that they're um, that's that's kind of surfaced right now. And as you know, as we transition and go, we're just starting. This is just a a beginning um, effort. This will change and adapt over time as the, as the issues change and the needs grow. Um, but these are the areas that the, that the Growing Nebraska Business Group is, uh, is addressing right now. So um, we're out there trying to support uh, our entrepreneurs uh, with opportunities. With, there's a lot of opportunities in the food systems, natural resources area, uh, in the profit center. We talked a little bit about that earlier. Um, facilitate help with the transfer of businesses and land and natural resources. We've got a lot of a lot of aging farmers and ranchers out there. There's going to be a huge turnover here in a very short time of uh, ownership and uh, help. We want to help uh, those landowners and those business owners um, find a way to sustain what they have. So um, they're doing a lot of work with those guys also with the food and ag products area and uh, agritourism again. So um, this is just a, a picture of one of the, one of the groups that the, that the Growing Nebraska groups are working with right now. So, okay. Um, the last area is creating 21st century communities. Um, we talked earlier, Connie talked about, you know, we want healthy and vibrant uh, environment for people with diverse backgrounds to want to live raise their families and come back and grow in Nebraska. Um, we want an infrastructure 
that's available to support entrepreneurship and business development. Um, that's what we're trying to do is build a base. I, you know, I see a partnership with the libraries. Is, this could be a huge area that would be very beneficial. Um, we'd love to have community members that are involved and engaged and help create a vision for the future. We can't do it without the communities. We can't do it without you. It has to be, um, it has to be a group effort and it has to be driven uh, from the grassroots up. What do you need? How can we help? Uh, you know, what's our vision? We need to sit down and, see, and, and figure out what we, what we want to look like in the future and how are we going to sustain what we have. Um, we need leaders that are going to generate ideas and projects and goals. Um, the community vision, and I tell you what, folks, I'm in Stanton County. Uh, the tornadoes got us here a month ago. Um, we have a lot of community leaders that are stepping up trying to figure out what the projects, what the goals, what's Pilger going to look like a year from now or 10 years from now. Um, these 21st century, how, how are we going to get there and how are we going to sustain ourselves? This, this, this is the heartbeat of, of any community uh, to keep that going. So um, I think it's very important and I hope, I hope uh, you do too. So, okay. Um, right now, like I said earlier, we, we transfer, we may transfer from one group to the other, but we're, we're working on attracting and retaining young people um, into our communities. And if we help engage them in leadership, give them opportunities for leadership in our communities, in our, in our culture, that will only strengthen our community and help build their skills and tech and techniques and, and, and strengthen from, from the bottom up. So that's a huge area. Uh, we, have, we have leadership programs across the state that go into communities and work, um, work not only with youth but young adults and, and, and uh, business people all across the state. Um, we've got a couple of programs, the broad ba Broadband uh, Connectivity Program. Uh, Connie Hancock can talk more about that. That's not my area. And then we do a lot of things with entrepreneurship and small business development, which is, which is huge. And um, we're working very hard with workforce, workforce prep techniques. Um, uh, right now I'm working with youth trying to teach them how to fill out resumes and how to interview. We do mock interviews. Uh, what kind of questions will they ask? What do you need to, prepare, uh, to be prepared for when you step into the workforce? But that goes across all ages and all stages. So, Connie, if you would talk a little bit about that broadband. Um, sure, I'd be glad to. The Joanne and Mary Jo and I have, and, and others, Charlotte, and have been talking about um, broadband planning. And we've, we're in the last stage of our, our grant. But if our communities are going to be 21st century communities, We've got to help our constituents um, adapt, adopt, and utilize the technologies that are available to us. And with that comes people can be in, live can live anywhere they want to live as long as they have access to the kinds of connections and understand the tools that are available to them to um, do some really phenomenal things. Um, one of the last conferences that I went to, I went, um, I toured a makerspace. Uh, it's an open source makerspace. They've got computer labs. They've got video room. They've got a million dollar robot. Uh, granted, this is in Grand Rapids, Michigan. But I'm thinking of our small communities, our rural communities, and having some kind of a makerspace area where people can bring their ideas they can play around with their ideas, they can code whatever programming they need to have, and it, it, it does a lot of different things. It, one, it helps educate a workforce. We're using the connections, we're using some leadership in helping provide that, that um, opportunity for folks. And, and our young people get excited about taking their thoughts, their ideas, and then actually making something of that. So there's, there's all kinds of conversations around that. Um, Ann Byers with the Nebraska Information Technology Commission, she's one of our partners in this endeavor. We're finishing up the um, statewide broadband plan, um, and that will 
um, that then will be distributed to the governor and others. And our, our job then is to implement that plan. It's not going to be a document that sits on a shelf. So there's all kinds of things that we can't do by ourselves because we don't have the resources. But how can we do that in a way that we partner with each other, uh, we partner with the local communities, we partner with you folks um, in your local libraries to do some really incredible stuff that we have not been able to do or would not have been able to do without the connections that um, our Community Vitality Initiative um, offers. Thanks, Connie. Um, and I think if, if uh, you will forward my slide one more time, these are the areas that the 21st century communities right now are targeting and working very hard um, to develop new and innovative programs and to partner across the state with uh, entities that are also entered, uh, excited and um, uh, want to look into these um, areas in leadership, ag literacy and advocacy, entrepreneurship and economic opportunities, education, and vision. So um, hopefully I haven't confused you. Hopefully I've just touched a few uh, opportunities and maybe showed you some, some new things or, or maybe introduced you to something that you might be interested in. Um, and certainly please let us know if there's an area that you want to partner with or you want uh, resources for or you want uh, someone to come in and visit with and work work with, that's what we do and we'd be uh, very excited to be able to um, to do that for you. So um, with that I'm going to turn it over I think to Connie. Yes, and this is where the fun part begins because we talk about the engagement piece. And as I mentioned, um, this is a, a truly a an initiative that is evolving. I mean, Connie mentioned that right off the bat. And as we think about the issues of the state of Nebraska, as we think about the issues of our rural communities and, and the things that you guys live um, and communicate with and have conversations with every day with folks, your constituents in the library, um, or at the coffee shop, or at church. Um, there's ways then to get involved and we've got varying levels of kind of engagement in this whole arena as well. So if you sl slip the next slide, Connie. Um, we've identified three different levels of, of engagement, not only internal within our system, but then as we think about our partners and how you guys might want to be involved. So we've got um, a core member, it's, you know, a core member is going to be thinking about community vitality an awful lot. They're going to have some expertise and knowledge and they're going to be active for the long-term creation of what this potentially looks like down the road. Um, and it's going to look different tomorrow than it does today. Just because conversations take place, ideas come forward, and we want to be as nimble as we possibly can because if we're not nimble, um, to address those issues or to address the, the, the conversations that are taking place. We're missing the opportunity to really do some wonderful things. Um, the engaged member then from an engagement perspective is um, being, being more involved at a greater level. Um, it may be that you're helping create a program. It may be that you're helping um, create something that's a little bit bigger. So you're going to be more involved in that kind of a conversation. There's no really job descriptions or position descriptions of any of this, but it's just varying levels of degree of, of engagement and potentially time commitment. And then in terms of a program, um, it may be that the program is already created. It may be that the engaged member and the core members have already created this. And you at the local level then have the opportunity then to just take that program and implement it. Um, into um, your existing program or ex your existing plan of work um, to address the needs. Um, we will be creating some online presence around CVI, uh, Community Vitality Initiative, and you might be a guest blogger. So if you've got something that you really need to share with people, 
there might be that kind of an opportunity as well. If you slip onto the next slide, Connie, um, these are the folks who are leaders of our Community Vitality Initiative currently. Um, uh, so you can, you can kind of put a name with a particular topic at this point in time. Um, there's a, six of us currently that are coaches of the Community Vitality Initiative. And the next slide gives the names of those. Kim and I have been the leaders of, and Connie, the leaders, the coaches of, of this effort. And um, we would welcome any additional input, any additional thoughts that you might have. If you want to be um, on our mailing list, um, please let us know so that we can get you more involved, uh, get you some additional information. We will be starting a CVI newsletter. Um, in the near future so that we can update people around what's happening. So say the Library Commission is doing some statewide programming or programming on a regional basis, whatever that might look like, we could actually put that into a, a newsletter format and share with the list of people that um, have signed up. I, I think the communication, uh, we're trying to develop a communication system that is um, all-inclusive and very informative about what's happening within those three topic areas. And it may not be perfect in the, in, as we move forward, but we do believe that there's got to be a way that we communicate um, with what's going on. So the excitement's building. Uh, we're excited. Connie and Kim and I have spent um, a lot of time thinking about how we're moving this forward, how we're engaging with people. Um, and we're, we are extremely open to all ideas um, as to how to make that happen. Um, it's, it, if you would like to be part of our listserv, um, the next slide shows um, how to join that listserv. Um, we do have monthly calls, and so um, we're beginning to open those up to um, others that may want to join. We do a lot of internal kind of conversation now of updating around these three topic areas. Uh, we're getting to a point where we also have guest speakers. So at some point in time, Joanne and Mary Jo, we might have the Library Commission come in and share what's happening from your perspective so that the, the CBI group can um, learn more and try to understand how we can partner better not only with the Commission, but then at the local level with our local educate um, with our local libraries as well because you guys are the anchor institution you're one of the the big players in our our rural communities in terms of activity and experiences for for people um, the next slide um, I think gives uh, Connie Reimers Hill Kim and my email addresses uh, and we would love to hear from you if you would like to be more engaged if you would like to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with us about Community Vitality Initiative. Um, it's a, it truly is an exciting time. I think it's an exciting time to live and work and play in Nebraska. And um, I think the opportunities that we have before us, um, we'll be able to address the, the issues. We'll be able to do some really big and bold things together. And I thank you for your time today. I hope that we have been able to share a little bit, maybe intrigued you a little bit, um, about what Community Vitality is. And um, the invitation is open for um, collaboration, engagement, and partnerships. OK, uh, thank you, Connie. And Connie and Kim, <laughs> um, I agree. This is definitely exciting um, work that you're doing, and I hope that more of our libraries do get involved with it. Um, and hopefully, this will help reach out to them. Um, before we do wrap up, I just want to see Joanne or Mary Jo, if you're still there. Did you want to add anything from our perspective? Thanks, Krista. Yes, we would. This is Mary Jo again, and Joanne and I are are excited about this project as well. And we just wanted to um, let you know that we'd be happy to share with you some of our thoughts about some collaboration and partnering uh, opportunities, but also to gather from local libraries some of their ideas and um, find a way to share that with the people involved with the Community Vitality Initiative. That's terrific. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Cool. We, we welcome that opportunity. 
Yeah, so and I know Joanne's been in meetings for about this, so I know we've gotten in there already. So um, hopefully it'll keep developing. Yeah. Okay. Um, anybody have any final questions or comments? Um, nothing has come in except um, throughout while you guys were talking. I think everyone was just very interested in learning about it. But does anybody have any last minute uh, questions they want to ask or anything they want to share um, about this topic? About if you've been doing something in your community with um, Extension Office, whether it's related to this or other programs they do. I know Rochelle already shared what they're doing in uh, Columbus. Nothing urgent. Doesn't look like anybody's putting anything in. That's fine. Um, they had their contact info there is on the slides. It'll, the slideshow will be included in the uh, recording afterwards, so you'll be able to get the information from there. Um, I've also been bookmarking some websites that I found as, as we were going through um, as you guys are going through your presentation, um, the CVI website on the Lincoln Extension page, Rural Futures Institute that you had mentioned earlier, um, and the main um, uh, extension page from UNL, so people can have, find out some more about what you guys are doing. Excellent. Thank you. We appreciate this time very much. Absolutely. Great. Okay. Good. All right. That will wrap it up for this week's show, then. I'm going to pull back presenter control to my computer. There we go. There we go. Yes. Okay, so that will wrap it up for this week's show on the UNL's Extensions Community Vitality Initiative. Um, we are recording, so it will be available eh, later today. Uh, the PowerPoint will be available, and I said all the links that I've been putting here into our Library Commission's uh, Delicious account will be available as well to you all collected together. Uh, so thank you very much for attending this week. I hope you join us next week when our um, it is our monthly Tech Talk with Michael Sowers. Michael is the uh, Technology Innovation Librarian here at the Nebraska Library Commission, and once a month he comes on and shares the tech news of the month since the last time he was on and brings on a guest speaker. Um, this month he's got Cynthia Stogdill, who's from uh, Fremont Public Schools here in Nebraska, to talk about using Twitter uh, to brand your school. So if you're um, in a school or a school district, this would be a show for you to watch to see how she's been using it and how you you can use Twitter and other social media um, in your library. Um, so sign up for that or any of our other episodes that we have coming up. Also, Encompass Live is on Facebook, so if you are a Facebook user, go ahead and like us there. You'll get notifications of when show is starting. I posted here this morning. Uh, join us right now on the fly if you want to, when recordings are available, announcements of new shows. So uh, if you are on uh, Facebook, definitely go ahead and join us there. Other than that, if nothing else doesn't look like any other urgent questions or comments have come in, that will be it for this morning. Thank you very much, and we will see you next week.